Hi everyone, welcome to FabForge 5. We design and build fun and unusual things, and we always learn something new along the way. This is part two of our secret knockbook project. In our first part, we did some 3D design, 3D printing, some laser cutting. We glued together our custom book box, and now we'll keep cranking on this project. We'll make some, uh, some good electronic assembly, bring it all together, test it, and see how it works. Stay tuned. Forge 5. Our secret knock book only opens when the user taps their custom secret knock. We're halfway through with the overall construction. We finished the plywood case last time. Now let's wrap up the case, start working on the electronics, and put it all together. I laser cut a little piece of cardboard like this. It's thin cardboard, but it fits right here on the inside of the cover. That gives a nice backdrop for the the laser cut there. So we'll position this and then it has two holes here and this is where our keeper goes. So our keeper looks like this. It's a 3D printed part with a um, paper clip that's been cut and bent to fit here. That looks like this. So it fits together and the keeper mounts right here but we have to drill two holes here for that and it would have been nice to have laser cut those holes and we could have but then they would have shown on the front and I don't want to have holes showing on the front so we'll mark these go to our drill press and we'll drill two holes part way through the plywood but not all the way through we don't want the holes to come out the other side let's do that now all right we're here at our drill press so I'm gonna take a punch and put two dimples right where we need to drill our holes. That will guide the drill bit into those holes in the right place. Now, most important, we need to set the depth of our drill bit just right using our depth stop adjustment here. So, and that should be it right there. All right, let's drill our holes very carefully. Together. So we'll place our cardboard in the right place. This is our little keeper. This does two things. It helps hold the cardboard and it also helps the book close and latch the right way. You'll see that in a bit. Mount this into our pre-drilled holes. Too tight. I don't want to strip the plywood. Just like that. So there's our keeper. All right, let's start soldering together our secret knockbook circuit board. So I had this circuit board made. This is the custom circuit board we designed using Fusion 360. Whatever uh, application you use to design a printed circuit board, you can then export the files for that board and upload them to a board fabrication website. There, there are many on the web. And then you just order how many boards you want. And here's our little Arduino Pro Mini. Um, these are just as powerful as a regular Arduino Uno, which is the classic Arduino, but they're a nice small size, smaller than my thumb. Uh, they work great. They have all the features of a regular Arduino. They just don't have, uh, for example, a USB port. And so I'll show you a bit later how we program this without having a USB port. Pretty simple though. It has a little reset button right here, which we won't use, but it also has a tiny LED here. And we'll use that LED to our advantage. It's basically a, a free LED for us to make some indications about how our 
secret knock book works, and you'll see that in a bit. So we'll go ahead and start soldering things together. I'm using a soldering iron that's just a, a adjustable temperature soldering iron. That doesn't really matter. What really matters is you have a nice, fine, pointed tip like this. And this one's actually getting a little bit worn out. It's not quite as uh, as sharp as I would like it to be, but it will still work just fine. And then you want to make sure that as you're using your soldering iron, you just wipe off the tip after each use, uh, even each solder, to make sure you keep it nice and clean and bright. Uh, we'll see me do that as we go. And if you want to see a great three or four minute video on how to solder for beginners, I'll put a link in the description below from Spark Fun. Great video for that. All right, let's get started. I thought this was a no smoking area. Here's our 3D printed base. So remember, I printed it with supports or scaffolds for the parts that printed above the build plate. So we'll just pull those scaffolds off right now. If your settings are right on your 3D printer, they usually pull off really easily. Sometimes in one piece, sometimes not, but you get the idea. It's not too difficult. Just like that. We got all our supports off. So now we'll take our printed circuit board and it slides right in there like that. Just like that. Now we need to solder two brass contacts onto these two pads. Those brass contacts are what connects to our battery holder. In them first. And I'll take my two pieces of brass and I'll pre tin those as well. These fit right in that little recess and get soldered onto the board. So now I just heat it up since it's already been tinned. Until the solder melts. Just 
like that. Here's our battery holder. It's got two nine volt tabs on it for a nine volt connector. Those conveniently fit right here into the nice recesses we made in our 3D printed base. Just like that. And then we fasten it with our screws. Let go into the holes in our base. So now we need to add our vibration motor, which is here. All right, it's our vibration disc. Move this out of the way for a minute. And now we'll solder our piezo disc. And these piezo discs, um, they're used a lot in toys or different things for a buzzer, sometimes kind of a cheap speaker. But like most speakers, they can also be used as a microphone. And in this case, this responds to taps really well. Each time you tap it, it just sends out a quick pulse of uh, current, or I'm sorry, a spike of voltage. And then our little, of course, Resistor here conditions that signal to be readable by the Arduino. So we'll go ahead and pre tin both of these wires. And we'll solder in our piezo disc. Now, this actually shares the same ground pad as the buzzer. So we'll do that first and make sure that we keep our buzzer also soldered on. Like that. And then we'll solder our positive connection. Just like that. Right, make sure they're both connected, looking good. Now we'll take our piezo buzzer, I'm sorry, our uh, vibration motor buzzer Pop it in like that. Make sure it's out of the way. We'll pop our piezo disc into its hole like that. And there we go, we're almost there. Now, we'll take our servo. I've clipped the leads to about three centimeters. We'll go ahead and pre-tin those as usual. Now, servos have three connections, positive voltage, ground, and the signal. The signal is what tells the servo which angle to turn to. So on our printed circuit board, you might be able to see it's marked with orange, brown, and in the center one is the um, positive voltage, just like this. So we'll pop this in here. And by the way, our servo fits right into the slots we made in our case like that. Now we'll solder it. All right, we'll make sure our three wires are connected properly. They are. All right. We're pretty much done. Now we need to program our Arduino very quickly and then put in some batteries. We'll turn it on. Now notice I didn't put the servo horn onto the servo yet. The tricky part here is this servo we're not quite sure when it was manufactured and delivered to us what 
angle is positioned at right now. If we put our servo horn on now and it tries to spin too far this direction, it'll bind up and may damage the servo. So our program, first thing it does is turn the servo to the zero position, which is just like this. Then we can put our servo horn on and it'll be in the right position. So we'll program the Arduino, add some batteries, turn it on and finish up. To program our Arduino Pro Mini, since it doesn't have a USB connector on it, we use this cable. Here's each end of it. USB on one end and this connector on the other end. This is a FTDI cable. It basically translates USB into the more raw signals that our Arduino needs, since it doesn't have its own USB port. We'll connect this to our computer, our laptop, and program the Arduino. All right, so the first thing we have to do is write the default secret knock into the EEPROM on our Arduino Pro Mini. The EEPROM is basically permanent memory. It doesn't lose its memory when the power goes off, but you can erase it and reprogram it with a Arduino sketch if you want to. So we have to do that first, otherwise the Arduino won't know what the secret knock is. Now it's important that that secret knock gets kept in EEPROM because when you want to program your own custom secret knock by pressing the program button, it saves that in its EEPROM and remembers it for the next time you turn on the secret knock book. Very important. So first we'll upload that. So we'll connect our FTDI to our Arduino. Just like that. Now you can see the LED on the Arduino, the onboard LED is blinking once per second. That's because the Arduino has been preloaded with a typical hello world sketch, which blinks the LED once per second. That way you know it's been tested and it works. So now we'll upload our EEPROM programming sketch. All right, it's time uploading. You can see that the LED stopped blinking because that sketch has been replaced with our EEPROM load sketch. Now we need to upload our actual secret knock box Arduino sketch. Let's do that now. And it's done. You hear it, uh, you hear it buzz there. That means the sketch has been loaded. All right, we'll disconnect our FTDI. Now we'll add some batteries and we'll test it. All right, we have batteries, three AAA batteries. Now we'll go ahead and turn it on and a few things will happen. So I mentioned that the vibration motor or the buzzer kind of plays a key role in the overall user interface. So when we first turn it on with our power switch, you'll hear the buzzer buzz a couple of times to tell the user that the box is ready. It takes a couple seconds for it to spin up the Arduino. And then once the box is ready, you may hear the servo um, set itself to the locked or zeroed position. And then we'll go ahead and tap our knock. Now, when I tap our knock, you'll see a couple things happen. The LED should flash with each tap. And then uh, if the knock is correct, you'll hear our servo move. So first, let's try that. So when we first turn it on, our servo will zero itself. And then I'll add our little servo horn and we'll give it a shot. Here we go. It's ready. Let's tap our knock. All right, heard our little servo move. So now we'll add our servo horn because now we know the servo is in the right place. It goes just like that. By the way, that was the error knock. It meant I it thought it heard a tap and it was the wrong knock because I made some noise with this. Now let's try it again. You'll see it move. There we go. It's working. So there's our little module. Now the trick with this is we can do a lot of things with this module. Uh, we'll talk about that at the conclusion, but now we know it's working and it'll go ahead and fit in our box. Let's install it and we'll get cranking. So after trying many different ideas of how to make a little spring to move our latch, I finally just realized a regular old safety pin is great for that, but we have to modify it a bit. So, I'll show you how that looks. All right. 
that's our little spring for our latch. Now let's install it. I'm going to save our original blue module to show you later. So we'll switch to a black module I already had and we'll use that to complete our assembly. Here's our latch. It has a small hole. Fits like this. And our fastening screw. Which screws into another hole in our base. And it's the pivot for our latch. Now you can see our latch moves like this. Now we want it to be pressed against the side of the box. It's not quite like that right now. So we just twist it a bit like this. There we go. It's a little minor adjustment, but that's the spring I came up with and it actually works pretty well. Safety pins are made to be springy. So I'll turn it on. I'll tap it. The, the that worked. Now it didn't quite catch the latch because the latch wasn't pushed over by the side of the book, but when the book is there, it will catch that. So that's how that works. Almost done. I'll mount our assembly. Our servo wire, a little bit bunched up right there. There we go. Slides in, presses to the back. Fits just like that. Now let's add our screw here to mount it. Nice and tight. There we go. And now, remember on the 3D design, we have a little guard that fits in here. Basically, if someone puts something in this box and it rattles around, we don't want it getting stuck in the servo. So we have a guard that covers that. It's right there and allows the servo horn to fit underneath it. It mounts in that small hole. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, our guard is in place. So let's test it and just make sure it works inside the box. And it does. All right, so now the big test is that, go ahead and close this. You can see what's going to happen. This latch bar will fit over our latch arm. This strip of plywood makes sure that the cover folds just in the right place. Let's go ahead and latch it. Let's see. So now it's closed and latched. Let's turn it on. We'll tap our secret knock. And there you go, it works. So it's a lot of fun. Um, you can obviously change your secret knock. So to do that, you push the small push button that's inside, hold it down and do a new knock. So I'll push and hold it, our lights on, let's tap a new knock. Okay, so now the knock has changed. And I'll show you from the inside how that looks. Let's get a close up here. All right, so that's it. That's our secret knock book. Now just to compare our prototype 
with our production version, I guess you would call it. They're about the same size. I like this size. It's about the size of a paperback book. But now we've got this nice laser cut book. I really like the flexible hinge here. Looks great. The fact that we used backing paper on the plywood to get a nice crisp laser cut. I always like that. We've got some nice engraving on the back. Everything fit together well. And so, yeah, I like this design. I think it'll work well. Just in case the batteries die, or if you forget your custom secret knock, there is a secret way to open up the book manually. You can push a paper clip into a small hole on the side and push the latch to open the knock for emergencies only. All right, we finished our secret knock book, had some fun doing it. We wanted to replace our prototype book was something that we had control over that we could make our own, um, you know, nice laser cut box with. Here's a different version of that where I just added something fun here in the center, uh, but it's the same plywood box. And then here's another example of uh, something that has a different laser cut pattern in it, a nice little heart there. So you can do a lot, a lot of different things with this. One thing I wanted to mention is that uh, our little module here our secret knock module. It uses a sub-micro hobby servo here to move a small latch inside our book, but that could be something bigger. It could be a bigger servo to move a larger latch, something that takes a lot more force. It could be a large motor to actuate something, a gear train or something. Uh, it could be a uh, large pneumatic, uh, you know, ram, whatever you want. So you could move something very large just by a small controller like this. You could keep all of the electronics and just interface it with some kind of a driver to drive something big. Now, what I was thinking is the ultimate application of that would be a secret knock bank vault where the bank manager comes in in the morning, taps their custom secret knock, and the bank vault spins its wheels and moves its uh, bars and opens up. Would that be great or what? I'll call the Federal Reserve. Not quite yet. But anyway, that's what I like to think about. What can, what can you do with the things you build and uh, what kind of extreme examples can you take it to? We might look at something like that in the future, but next time we'll build something entirely new. I think you'll enjoy it. And until I see you next time, don't forget to please subscribe and like and take good care of each other. I'll see you again. Bye.